Welcome to Her Business, Her Voice, Her Conversation. This podcast was created for the boomer woman leaving corporate. And now you're looking to reinvent yourself, become an author, an entrepreneur, a podcaster. Well, each episode will leave you with clarity. You will come away with the yes, I can, and yes, I will reinvent myself mindset. So come on, let's do this. I'm your host, Margo Levette. All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Another episode, Her Business, Her Voice, Her Conversation. Well, today is a very special conversation, I do believe, because it's directed towards women. But guys, you know what? As I take a look at the subject matter, I think you probably will uh, find a, you'll shake your head and say, "Mm mm-hmm, me too. Yes. Let me sit down and really take a look at what this lady's talking about. I'm talking about the creator, the founder of Mastering Your Monday LLC, which is a lifestyle enrichment firm. Today, I'm going to have a conversation with Michelle O'Neill. Michelle, thank you for for joining me today. I appreciate it. Oh, it is such a pleasure. Thank you for having me on. I am honored to be here today. Well, you're the lady that is going to help us talk about this thing that we all get into, and it's over committing. We get over, we don't know how to say no. We don't give ourselves permission to do so. Then we're feeling overwhelmed. We're feeling stressed. We're feeling anxious. And, you know, I used to think that it was only because I had to go here to this networking thing or I had to to go and do this with the kids. But now I'm finding people are overwhelmed, overextended in the digital world also. So, Michelle, will, will you just take us there? What is this thing of overwhelm? and overcommitting, what is that all about? Well, it involves two of my favorite things. And it's, it's not putting those boundaries in place of letting others understand where you end and they begin. And then it's also not being able to say no. And one of the reasons for that is our days, our actions, everything is often driven by unrealistic expectations, and that unattainable lifestyle or life that we find ourselves captive in. I mean, and it is, I use the word captive because that's how we feel. That's how we're feeling. Like there's no way out. There's no end. We're stuck in this perpetual hamster wheel per se, you know, and then our desire is to find a way out of that prison that we find our, find ourselves captive in. Because when you're doing things that they're no longer bringing joy to you, you no longer feel like you want to be there, then you have created your own prison that you're stuck in. Mm-hmm. Wow. And then, I'm, oh gosh, I am hearing everything that you're saying, and it is so true, and I can relate to that. That's, is that where the resentment comes in? Because, I've, I mean, there are times when I have resented uh, and, and then, wait a minute, then you have the audacity to blame the other person, because, but you are the one that made the commitment. You are the one that said, I will, I'm available. And then you got attitude when it's time to, to follow through. <laughs> this is crazy. Girlfriend, that is so true. But what we don't understand, and a lot of times we as women think, hey, I can deal with this. I can handle this because we think we are superwoman or we've been uh, groomed to try to be the, the superwoman. And then, so now we're, we're caregivers, we're taking care of our kids, we're taking care of our elderly parents, we have the expectations of our job, our work, the unmet expectations, and then we feel guilty or like we failed because we can't do everything that we think, notice the word think, we think everybody wants us to do. And a lot of times, Those are expectations that we put on ourselves. I mean, me, myself, I'm a very competitive person. So I'm not my greatest. I mean, other people aren't my greatest competition. I'm my greatest competition because I'm always pushing myself to be at a higher level. Well, that can create one of the worst things that we are all dealing with, and that's stress. And the stress levels right now are off the roof. And what we don't understand is how much that stress affects our body. There's actually two types of stress, but the one I'm talking about right now is chronic stress. And what that does is that literally affects our bodies. 
and we're wondering, oh, why is my hair falling out? Why am I not sleeping? Why is my mind, why, do, why am I in a brain fog? I can't think clear anymore. I don't complete my sentences. I was saying something and I can't even remember what I was just talking about. All that, it's not that you're going senile. It's not that you have Alzheimer's or whatever. It's because you're trying to do so much. You're overcommitted, overwhelmed, and overstressed. Mm, wow. And that is just not good. And then our bodies take a toll. Our bodies try to tell us what's going on, but then we don't even listen to our bodies. We keep pushing, pushing, pushing until something happens. And then exactly. we have to listen. Exactly. It shuts down. Your body actually shuts down on you. So that's why we need to create those, those uh, boundaries in our lives. We must understand ourselves. We have to understand our behaviors and realize, you know, what we can do, what our resources are, what are we pushing ourselves to do, even though it's not in our wheelhouse. You know how a lot of times they always say, stay in your lane? Mm -hmm. Well, it's okay to delegate and you have to learn to delegate also, you know, what is your wheelhouse? Where is your expertise? And what can you let other people do? And a lot of times, especially as a mom, we're not even allowing our kids to grow up and do the things that they should be doing. Mm -hmm. I remember growing up, there were certain chores. There was cleaning your room. You even learned how to cook. Mm -hmm. You learned how to do the dishes. All this stuff was part of life. And a lot of the kids coming up now, you're lucky if you can get them to take the trash out. You know it. Yep. Yep. That is so true. I, I hear you talking about your wheelhouse and um, setting up these boundaries. I'm just kind of wondering, and get, get, let, let me get your thoughts on this. Monique Russell was on the show, and she was talking about communication and how we have to have a communication with ourselves. Do you find that we don't set up the boundaries? We can't stay in our own wheelhouse and delegate because we really don't know who we are. What does that have to do with all of this, that what we're talking about? Well, one of the things are we are or our actions are taken on our values and beliefs. So it's what you believe. And a lot of times what you believe are built on faulty ground. In other words, it's the things you grew up with, the things that your mother taught you or your grandmother taught you. I mean, I was just talking to someone the other day and I thought, you know, I had spilled some salt. Now, now I'm a firm believer in, in uh, God and Jesus Christ. So, mm -hmm. you know, I don't believe in this luck stuff. Mm -hmm. But what did I do? Threw the salt over my back anyway, you know? <laughs> so, but we do those things. So we have these underlying beliefs that actually drive our actions. See, I did something that I had no, no need to do, but it drove my actions. And it was like, well, mom always said. And so a lot of times we do these things. And so we're not going to take the action that we should take because of these old patterns and beliefs that we have from the, from the past. So what we have to look at those and say, one of the things is to stop. When you're doing something, stop. Why am I doing this? Is it the correct action? Just some, is, is this the correct action? Does this really fit what I'm doing? And ask yourself, is this each one of those things? You know, And I had her tell me, well, what is this? And then I'm like, well, I don't have to have that every New Year's, every New Year's. It was just that we were built on things that we grew up with. So start questioning those values. Start questioning those uh, beliefs and find out, do they fit into who you are now? Got you. Got you. Look like we had a little uh, blooper go on. Look like my screen just kind of froze up. So I missed a little bit of that conversation. Um, what we grow and and when I last thing that I heard was what we grow up with may not fit what we really are who we really really are is that what I'm hearing you say yes who you who you are now the person you have become the person you have grown into and we continually evolve and grow but that person isn't the same person who you started out as and we have to be able to evaluate that constantly. You know, it's, it's just like medicine or anything else. There's always evolution. We are forever evolving. And so we have to always, always evolve our thoughts mm -hmm. also. 
And with that evolution comes our ability to grow into setting these boundaries. Would you say setting the boundaries, being comfortable enough with ourselves that, well, they may not like this, but this is what I have to do for myself and being all right with that. That Do you find that most of us continue to grow and are able to evolve that way? Or do we just stay stuck, miserable, um, and just kind of like a, a, a doormat, as they say. Well, most of the people, the clients that you work with, when, when, how do I, I, I guess I'm just, I'm looking at two different types of people. I'm looking at some people who are chronically uh, a doormat, chronically the underdog, and then you have those that have evolved and they have grown to this place of finding their voice, finding their power and being all right there. So I guess what I'm trying to ask you is, do we do, do we have these two separate sets of people in our lives? And what do we do about that? Absolutely. The thing is we, a lot of times when we don't set those boundaries, you know, that creates low self-esteem in us. We're always people pleasing like I said, we have unrealistic expectations and there's a neediness because we fear the outcome. Maybe we won't be liked. Maybe they won't look at us the way we want them to look. And so that allows for manipulation. We have no control. So that person has no control in their life. Their life is unbalanced because they're not setting any boundaries and they actually are putting themselves in a toxic environment. So to, to, in order to get out of that, we have to actually be able to be completely honest, brutally honest with ourselves. And a lot of times, most of us aren't willing to go to that place of honesty. Simple as that. But going to that place of honesty allows us to take the control that we, we deserve and the control that we really want. Your true control lies in setting those boundaries, having those basic guidelines of, of our behavior and it's taking ownership because that's what you're doing when you set boundaries. You're taking ownership for your actions and the things you decide and you're taking responsibility and you're dishing out consequences to those, those actions. I think you hit the nail on the head. Ownership. So many people don't want to own their actions. They don't want to own the moment. They don't want to own the future. That is golden. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you heard that. Everybody has to own it. And uh, Michelle, do you find that when we don't own it, that's when we get in the most trouble? That's when we really don't have the control that we should have. Exactly. You know, um, I know you're hearing now that about silence. Mm-hmm. Well, silence, silence is giving control to others instead of taking the control yourself. You know, we can't control our circumstances. We can't control what happens around us. We can't control other people. But what we can control is how we let those circumstances, other people, and the things, our environment affect us. That's where our ownership is. And that's where our responsibility lies. We have a responsibility to ourselves to not be walked over. So we have to take that control. Girlfriend, there is nothing that we have control over, but ourselves. Ourselves. I like that. And I truly, truly believe that. I'm looking at today, and you made reference to what's going on in the world today. Um, When we go into this new day, when we are mastering our Monday, and every day can be a Monday, and we're looking at the world as a whole, Can you give us a how to, a what to, some kind of information concerning how do we go into each day looking at the state of this world and not feeling overwhelmed, staying in control, and being able to be resilient and and be responsible and add to the narrative and add to the life that has to go into today? That's a big question, but so many people are just, they're just stuck because they're overwhelmed by, we have COVID, we have the the racism, we have everything, it seems like it's coming in at one time. How do people adapt and receive all of this? I can't tell everyone what to do for themselves, but I can share with you what I do. And I can always say, I always say, start at the lowest level. 
That's the only thing you have control on. Yes, we'd love to make the world better. We'd love to make COVID go, go away. We'd love for there not to be systemic racism, but we can't, we can't change the world but we start changing those things at the lowest level. Now that lowest level may be ourselves, it may be our families, it may be our communities, or it may be our state or, or bigger. If you've got a platform and it's the UN, it's at the UN, you know, wherever your platform is. If you're a senator, then it's, in that, it's on that floor, that Senate floor. But wherever you can start at the lowest level, that's where we begin. And most of us is right there with ourselves and within our homes and maybe our communities branching out to that. So one of the first things I do is I start the night before, if not the, the next morning, but I start thinking right the night before, what is it I want to accomplish tomorrow? What is it I feel that make, will make a difference? And every morning I only pick three things that are important, regardless of what area of my life, some days it's more of personal areas, some days it's more business area, but I pick just three things that at the end of the day, I feel like I really accomplished something. I made a difference and I did something. And the whole day, if nothing else, everything I do is focused on what it is I wanted to do today. Whether it's one of give a meal, I want Mrs. Mrs. James down the road to make sure she gets a meal then part of my day, everything I do will be, do I have the food? Do I need to go to the store? Did I, did I, did I do the stuff in the oven? Did I pull the meat out of the fridge? All, everything I do will be, one of those things will be focused on making sure I get that done today. And we have to do that. A lot of times we have, again, a list of like 10, 20 things that we want to get accomplished today. And that's unrealistic. And then so at the end of the day, because you're not getting those things done, you feel like a failure. But if we only have three big things and all our small actions are towards making that happen, now we have a sense of accomplishment. Yes, yes. It's not our to-do list. It's an, it's an our accomplishment list. Oh, I like that. Our accomplishment list. Mm -hmm. And you have control of the accomplishment list. Mm-hmm. Okay. I hope everybody heard that. Control, you're planning, and you're, you're maintaining control. Not a to-do list, accomplishment list. Wow. And then the other, thing, the other thing is to make sure that you are, how do I say, so in tune to yourself that you understand when you've hit your limits. You have to understand your own limits. And sometimes it's a simple thing of, okay, okay, I'm doing too much. I need five minutes. I just need to breathe. I need to walk outside. I just need to get up, whatever it is, but taking that time. Don't stop. Stop trying to, we try to push through it. Yeah. And all we're doing is, is pushing down that stress and it comes out in other areas in our bodies or whatever. So take that. There's a lot of times I will take a walk. I will take an hour walk. But the, th the thing about that walk is that's where my best creativity is. I will take a shower. That's where my best creativity is. So you have to allow your mind the space to breathe and think and regroup. And you have to have sleep. And that's a lot of times, a lot of us will just work through the night. Oh, I got to get this done. Okay, it's okay if I only get three hours sleep. But you're not giving the person the next day the best of you. We have to think beyond ourselves. Wow. Gosh not giving them the best of ourselves. And you are a, a coach. Uh, I would venture to say what you are teaching and leading other people to know, to implement, you put these things into, position, into place yourself. So it's not like you're speaking to a textbook. This is what you know. This is what works. This is what we're, I'm back on the accomplishment list. I'm, I'm using that one right now. It's no longer a to-do list, accomplishment list. I love that. It, it's all in our, what, how do we approach this thing of walking, not being overwhelmed and maintaining control and being our best? You are teaching us how to be our utmost, uh, our best 
so that we can be the best for those in our families, our clients, the world. I love well, it. Exactly. And when we don't allow others to uh, live into their responsibility to put the control in their hand too for their lives, not your life, their lives, then we're not allowing them to grow and be their best also. So especially when it comes to our kids oh and, and say our elderly, our elderly parents, you know, a lot of times because it's easier, we want to take over their lives, you know, because we think they're senile or we think they can't do things for themselves. But do you ever take the time to say, mom, what do you want? Mm -hmm. What's important to you? And then you start helping them, helping them accomplish that. Then That's they feel fulfilled. powerful. That's yes. powerful. When, when we don't teach our kids to, to take care of themselves, to cook, to do the laundry, and we do everything for them, when we're cooking for them, and, and I'm not saying we don't cook for them. I'm not saying that. But we also need to teach them that they aren't, it's not the world according to child, you know? It's, there are other people in the world and we're to serve. And we have to teach them that. It just doesn't come natural. We're naturally selfish. So we have to teach that way of living and teach them that they have control in that way. You know, people don't understand control. Mm -hmm. We think control is the control we have over other people but we don't have that. Again, the control, the only control we have is on ourselves. So then we have to deal with the consequences of not utilizing that control correctly. Yeah. And it's brutal. It's brutal when it, when it comes home to rest like that, it's, it's brutal. Uh, I've, I've seen it. You have a book out mastering your Monday, correct? Absolutely. Is it a workbook? What, when we per make that purchase, what can we expect? Because this conversation is rich. I always tell people they're going to have to listen more than one time because you gave a, a multitude of how-tos. But when we purchase, make our purchase of MasteringYourMonday.com, what do we have to look forward to? Well, one of the things is I, I loved it because it, I love doing it. Because what I did is my mother is an integral part of my life. Mm. Um, and most mothers are, but she has such wisdom. She always, she was always doing things, saying things. And, you know, growing up, we think, oh, yeah, well, okay, mom, whatever, you know. But I never realized until a few years back how rich the wisdom that she gave me. So all through this book, I'm going to tell you right up front, you're going to hear a lot of things that she said, the little sayings that she said, you know, and, and, but what I do is I take it and break it down. What, what, did, what were some of those things? What did they mean? And then at the end of each chapter, there's questions. Some are only one question. Some are three questions of how you can move forward. And think about mastering your Monday. You know, we talk about things like identifying patterns that we have in our lives because there are good patterns and there are bad patterns. And so we have to identify them first and then making important choices. And then we talk about navigating the consequences of your actions. You know, every, we always think we can just do, not, do something and it's okay. No, everything, every action has consequences. And sometimes those consequences affect other people. So do you ever think how my actions is going to hurt or affect or build up someone else? And a lot of times we don't. So then there's living up to expectations of, of yourself and others. And then I have one that's called, one chapter that's called Fractured Lives. And we talk about the fact that if you've ever looked at a mosaic, what is a mosaic? It's a bunch of broken pieces of glass. Well, a lot of times our lives are shattered like that. But each piece has a richness to it. And when you put it back together, it's a beautiful piece of art. And that's how we want to build our lives. Oh, wow. What a magnificent book. Uh, just, oh my goodness, magnificent. So we can work through 
these obstacles, those places where we get stuck, those places, and they can be fearful, scary places, places we are, are uh, too ashamed to tell somebody that we are right there. So in um, Mastering Your Monday, you help people work through and walk through those, those tough places in life. Also, as a professional, you are coach and you lead and you guide. Will you tell people how they can get in, in contact with you? Absolutely. Well, of course, you can always catch me on MasteringYourMonday.com, but I'm also on social media all under my name, Michelle O'Neill. So all you have to do is know the spelling and you can find me on, on Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, YouTube. I have uh, videos that I do every week. They're called Monday Mastery Moments. And so I put those out um, on those social media too. Just things that I feel that I've been led to talk about during that week. Oh, wow. Oh, my goodness. So a person can really get a feel for how you operate. And I, would, I really am a strong advocate, excuse me, <clears throat> strong advocate of if you're stuck, get some help because everything is put on hold until you deal with that place. I, I went through it myself. I would imagine Michelle's been there. Uh, oh, yes. Get some sel- yourself some help because you're no good to yourself. You can't hear. You can't see. You can't. Uh, you can't begin to receive the good things in life that are waiting for you. They can't come into that contaminated space where you are. Would you agree, Michelle? Absolutely. I just want to say one thing. A lot of people say, well, I can get through this myself. I can figure it out myself. You know, I've done it before. Absolutely. But here's my question to you. We can always, everything, there's nothing that's not out there. Nothing. We can find out the cure for whatever. But the thing is, you can take a long time and do it yourself, or you can get help and get through it faster. Which one do you want? Wow. That's it. You heard it from the professional. You heard it from the woman that can can lead you into your better life and help you master your Monday Catch her on social media. Grab that book, MasteringYourMonday.com. Michelle O'Neill, thank you so much for coming on. I, gosh, I appreciate you. These days, <coughs> excuse me, these days when there's so much pressure, so much stress, you gave how-tos and to men and to women so that we can all be better. Thank you so much. Thank you. It has really been an honor and a pleasure. Well, we are going to have to do this again because, I, and I, I always say this is my last question, but really, for real, this is my <laughs> last question. <laughs> when we look at what's going on in the world, I don't believe that we're ever going to not need your kind of service. I don't, I think people will always find themselves stuck, overwhelmed, overtaxed, over, underappreciated, uh, What's your take on that? I I think when we look at the world, this is just a way of life, but it doesn't have to be a way of life when they can reach people like you. No, and part of that is creating that balance in your life. We are designed for uh, routine and structure. That's just how God designed us. And when we don't have that normalcy in our lives, we can't create or receive that calm and that peace that we're striving for. And so part of Mastering Your Monday and everything is we have to create that normalcy. Even in the midst of this pandemic and this unrest, we have to recreate for ourselves what that normalcy is and those that structure in our life. Okay. Put on your oxygen mask first so that you can help uh, somebody else. That's what it sounds like. You better go ahead and take this self-care, take it to heart, do the work and come out better. So I promise that was my last question, but thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're going to have to come back because I want to chart and I want to keep, um, stay on top of what's going on with people so that we can start to heal as the, the world and life is healing. It will happen because people are doing the same thing. So 
I will be back next week with a brand new episode, her business, her voice, her conversation. As I always say, listen more than once. Michelle gave us a multitude of nuggets and there's no way that you can gather everything that she brought in her arsenal for us today with one listen. So take a listen. I'll be back next week. In the meantime, I have to say bye-bye. See you later. Sponsors for Her Business, Her Voice, Her Conversation are Podcast Academy Online. Learn to podcast like an adult, built for the busy entrepreneur or the hobbyist. Visit our membership community at podcastacademyonline.com. And Buzzsprout. Buzzsprout, the easiest, best way to promote and track your podcast. Your show could be online, listed in all of the major directories like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and more. Get your $20 Amazon gift card for signing up. The link is in the show notes. I want to thank you for listening to her business, her voice, her conversation. A couple of things that I want you to do right now, go to my website, pick up a copy of her business, her voice, her reinvention, how I went from game show hopping to international show host, author and speaker in one year. Number two, please freely listen to each and every episode, share them out with your family, friends, the men in your lives. And then number three, get in contact with me, one of the experts that have been on the show, because I want to make sure that you reinvent yourself. I'll be back next week with a brand new episode here on Her Business, Her Voice, Her Conversation.